Basilis, Greek, Basilis is a Greek term and title that has signified various types of monarchs in history. In the English-speaking world it is perhaps most widely understood to mean «king» or «emperor». The title was used by the Byzantine emperors, and has a longer history of use by sovereigns and other persons of authority in ancient Greece, as well as for the kings of modern Greece. The feminine forms are Basileia, Basileia Basilis, Basilis Basilissa, Basilissa or the archaic Basilina, Basilina meaning «queen» or «empress». Etymology <inaudible> 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 The etymology of Basilis is unclear. The Mycenaean form was asterisk G Asilius linear B, Qac Ryu, denoting some sort of court official or local chieftain, but not an actual king. Its hypothetical earlier Proto-Greek form would be asterisk G Atilius. Most linguists assume that it is a non-Greek word that was adopted by Bronze Age Greeks from a pre-existing linguistic pre-Greek substrate of the Eastern Mediterranean. Schindler 1976 argues for an inner Greek innovation of the EUS inflection type from Indo-European material rather than a Mediterranean loan. Topic: Ancient Greece. Topic: Original senses encountered on clay tablets. The first written instance of this word is found on the baked clay tablets discovered in excavations of Mycenaean palaces originally destroyed by fire. The tablets are dated from the 15th century BC to the 11th century BC and are inscribed with the Linear B script, which was deciphered by Michael Ventris in 1952 and corresponds to a very early form of Greek. The word basilis is written as Qac Ryu and its original meaning was chieftain. In one particular tablet, the chieftain of the Guild of Bronze Smiths is referred to as Qac Ryu. Here, the initial letter Q represents the pi labiovelar consonant asterisk per gram, transformed in later Greek into b. Linear b uses the same glyph for l and r, now uniformly written with a Latin r by convention. Linear b only depicts syllables of single vowel or consonant vowel form, therefore the final s is dropped altogether. Topic. Basilis versus Wanix in Mycenaean times The word can be contrasted with Wanix, another word used more specifically for king, and usually meaning high king, or overlord. With the collapse of Mycenaean society, the position of Wanix ceases to be mentioned, and the basilis the plural form appear the topmost potentates in Greek society. In the works of Homer Wanix appears, in the form Anax, mostly in descriptions of Zeus Anax Andron te Theon te, king of men and of the gods, and of very few human monarchs, most notably Agamemnon. Otherwise the term survived almost exclusively as a component in compound personal names e.g. Anaxagoras, Pleistanax and is still in use in modern Greek in the description of the Anactoran, Anactora, place or home of the Anax, i.e. of the royal palace. The latter is essentially the same word as wa na ka te ro, wanokteros, of the wanix, king, or belonging to the wanix, king, used in linear B tablets to refer to various craftsmen serving the king, e.g. the palace, or royal, spinner, or the ivory worker, and to things belonging or offered to the king, javelin shafts, wheat, spices, precincts, etc. Most of the Greek leaders in Homer's works are described as basilis, which is conventionally rendered in English as kings. However, a more accurate translation may be princes or chieftains, which would better reflect conditions in Greek society in Homer's time, and also the roles ascribed to Homer's characters. Agamemnon tries to give orders to Achilles among many others, while another basilis serves as his charioteer. His will, however, is not to be automatically obeyed. In Homer the Wanix is expected to rule over the other Basilis by consensus rather than by coercion, which is why Achilles proudly and furiously rebels the central theme of the Iliad when he perceives that Agamemnon is unjustly bossing him around. Topic. Archaic Basilis a study by Robert Drews 1983 has demonstrated that even at the apex of geometric and archaic Greek society, basilis does not automatically translate to king. 
In a number of places authority was exercised by a college of basilis drawn from a particular clan or group, and the office had term limits. However, basilis could also be applied to the hereditary leaders of tribal states, like those of the Arcadians and the Messenians, in which cases the term approximated the meaning of king. Topic: Pseudo Archytas definition of the basilis as sovereign and living law. According to Pseudo Archytas's treatise on justice and law. Quoted by Giorgio Agamben in State of Exception 2005, Basilis is more adequately translated into «sovereign» than into «king». The reason for this is that it designates more the person of king than the office of king. The power of magistrates archontes, archons, derives from their social functions or offices, whereas the sovereign derives his power from himself. Sovereigns have octoritas, whereas magistrates retain imperium. Pseudo Archytas aimed at creating a theory of sovereignty completely enfranchised from laws, being itself the only source of legitimacy. He goes so far as qualifying the basilis as nomos empsicos, or living law, which is the origin, according to Agamben, of the modern Fuhrprinzip and of Carl Schmitt's theories on dictatorship. Topic: <laughs> Use of basilis in classical times. In classical times, almost all Greek states had abolished the hereditary royal office in favor of democratic or oligarchic rule. Some exceptions existed, namely the two hereditary kings of Sparta who served as joint commanders of the army, and were also called Archegetai, the kings of Syracuse, the kings of Cyrene, the kings of Macedon and of the Molotians in Epirus and kings of Arcadian Orchomenus. The Greeks also used the term to refer to various kings of barbaric i.e. non-Greek tribes in Thrace and Illyria, as well as to the Achaemenid kings of Persia. The Persian king was also referred to as Megas Basilis Great king or Basilis Basileon, a translation of the Persian title Exia Theta Iya Exia Theta Eonim, King of Kings, or simply, the king. There was also a cult of Zeus Basilis at Lebedea. Aristotle distinguished the Basilis, constrained by law, from the unlimited tyrant Tyrannos. At Athens, the Archon Basilis was one of the nine archons, magistrates selected by lot. Of these, the Archon Eponymas, the Polemarch and the Basilis divided the powers of Athens' ancient kings, with the Basilis overseeing religious rites and homicide cases. His wife had to ritually marry Dionysus at the Anthesteria festival. Philippides of Paeonia was one of the richest Athenians in the age of Lycurgus of Athens, he was honored Archon, Basilis in 293 halves. Similar vestigial offices called basilis existed in other Greek city-states. By contrast, the authoritarian rulers were never called basilis in classical Greece, but Archon or Tyrannos, although Phidon of Argos is described by Aristotle as a basilis who made himself a tyrant. <laughs> Alexander the Great Basilis and Megas Basilis were exclusively used by Alexander the Great and his Hellenistic successors in Ptolemaic Egypt, Asia e.g. the Seleucid Empire, the Kingdom of Pergamon and non-Greek but Greek-influenced states like the Kingdom of Pontus and Macedon. The feminine counterpart is Basilissa, queen, meaning both a queen regnant such as Cleopatra VII of Egypt and a queen consort. It is precisely at this time that the term basilis acquired a fully royal connotation, in stark contrast with the much less sophisticated earlier perceptions of kingship within Greece. <laughs> Romans and Byzantines Under Roman rule, the term basilis came to be used, in the Hellenistic tradition, to designate the Roman emperor in the everyday and literary speech of the Greek-speaking Eastern Mediterranean. Although the early Roman emperors were careful to retain the facade of the republican institutions and to not formally adopt monarchical titles, the use of basilis amply illustrates that contemporaries clearly perceived that the Roman Empire was a monarchy in all but name. Nevertheless, despite its widespread use, due to its royal associations the title basilis remained unofficial for the emperor, and was restricted in official documents to client kings in the east. Instead, in official context the imperial titles Caesar Augustus, translated or transliterated into Greek as Kaiser Sebastos or Kaiser Augustos, and Imperator, translated as Autocrator, were used. 
By the 4th century however, basilis was applied in official usage exclusively to the two rulers considered equals to the Roman Emperor, the Sassanid Persian Shahanshah King of Kings", and to a lesser degree the King of Aksum, whose importance was rather peripheral in the Byzantine worldview. Consequently, the title acquired the connotation of Emperor. And when barbarian kingdoms emerged on the ruins of the Western Roman Empire in the 5th century, their rulers were referred to in Greek not as basilis but as rex or regas, the Hellenized forms of the Latin title rex, king. The first documented use of basilis Romaean in official context comes, surprisingly, from the Persians, in a letter sent to Emperor Maurice R. 582 by Chosros II. Maurice is addressed in Greek as basilis Romaean instead of the habitual Middle Persian appellation Kesar i Ram. Caesar of the Romans, while the Persian ruler refers to himself correspondingly as person Basilus, thereby dropping his own claim to the Greek equivalent of his formal title, Basilus Basileon, King of Kings. The title appears to have slowly crept into imperial titulature after that, and Emperor Heraclius is attested as using it alongside the long-established autocrator Kaiser in a letter to Cava II in 628. Finally, in a law promulgated on 21 March 629, the Latin titles were dropped altogether, and the simple formula Pistos en Christoi Basilis, faithful believer, emperor by the grace of Christ, was used instead. The adoption of the new imperial formula has been traditionally interpreted by scholars such as Ernst Stein and George Ostrogorsky as a move indicative of the almost complete Hellenization of the empire by that point. In imperial coinage, however, Latin forms continued to be used. Only in the reign of Leo III the Isaurian r. 717 did the title Basilis appear in silver coins, and on gold coinage only under Constantine VI r. 780 Basilis was initially stamped on Byzantine coins in Latin script, and only gradually were some Latin characters replaced with Greek ones, resulting in mixed forms such as B -A -S -I -lambda -E -V -S. Until the 9th century, the Byzantines reserved the term basilis among Christian rulers exclusively for their own emperor in Constantinople. This usage was initially accepted by the barbarian kings of Western Europe themselves. Despite having shed the fiction of Roman suzerainty from the 6th century on, they refrained from adopting imperial titulature. The situation began to change when the Western European states began to challenge the empire's political supremacy and its right to the universal imperial title. The catalytic event was the coronation of Charlemagne as Imperator Romanorum, Emperor of the Romans, by Pope Leo III on the 25th of December 800 at St Peter's in Rome. The matter was complicated by the fact that the Eastern Empire was then ruled by the Empress Irene R. 797 who had ascended the throne after the death of her husband, the Emperor Leo IV R. 775 as regent to their nine-year-old son, Constantine VI R. 780 Following Constantine's coming of age, Irene eventually decided to topple him and rule in her own name. In the conflict that ensued, Irene was victorious and Constantine was blinded and imprisoned, to die soon after. The revulsion generated by this incident of filicide cum regicide was compounded by the innate Frankish aversion to the concept of a ruling female sovereign. Consequently, in Frankish eyes, the imperial throne was vacant and free for Charlemagne to claim. Although it is often claimed that, as monarch, Irene called herself in the male form Basilis, in fact she normally used the title Basilissa, Empress. Charlemagne's claim to the imperial title of the Romans sparked a prolonged diplomatic row, which was resolved only in 812 when the Byzantines agreed to recognize him as Basilis. In an effort to emphasize their own Roman legitimacy, the Byzantine rulers thereafter began to use the fuller form Basilis Romaean, Basilis Roman, Emperor of the Romans, instead of the simple. Basilis, a practice that continued in official usage until the end of the empire. The title autocrator was also revived by the early 9th century and appears in coins from 912 on. It was reserved for the senior ruling emperor among several co-emperors who exercised actual power. The term Megas Basilis, great emperor, was also sometimes used for the same purpose. By the Palaiologan period, the full style of the emperor was finalized in the phrase X, in Christ the God faithful emperor and autocrat of the Romans. Greek. Chi. En Christoi toi theoi pistos basilis chi autocrator Roman. 
Chi, en Cristo te Theopistos Basilis Chi Autocrator Romain. The later German emperors were also conceded the title, Basilis of the Franks. The Byzantine title in turn produced further diplomatic incidents in the 10th century, when Western potentates addressed the emperors as emperors of the Greeks. A similar diplomatic scuffle this time accompanied by war ensued from the imperial aspirations of Simeon I of Bulgaria in the early 10th century. Aspiring to conquer Constantinople, Simeon claimed the title, Basilis of the Bulgarians and of the Romans, but was only recognized as Basilis of the Bulgarians by the Byzantines. From the 12th century however, the title was increasingly, although again not officially, used for powerful foreign sovereigns, such as the kings of France or Sicily, the czars of the restored Bulgarian Empire, the Latin emperors and the emperors of Trebizond. In time, the title was also applied to major non-Christian rulers, such as Tamerlane or Mehmed II. Finally, in 1354, Stefan Dusan, king of Serbia, assumed the imperial title, styling himself in Greek as Basilus and Autocrator of the Romans and Serbs. <laughs> New Testament and Jesus While the terms used for the Roman emperor are Caesar Augustus, decree from Caesar Augustus, dogma para Caesaros Augusto, Luke chapter 2 verse 1, or just Caesar, see render unto Caesar. And Pontius Pilate is called Hegemon, Matthew chapter 27 verse 2. Herod is Basilus in his coins also Basileos Herodu, of King Herod. And by Josephus Regarding Jesus the term Basilus acquires a new Christian theological meaning out of the further concept of Basilus as a chief religious officer during the Hellenistic period. Jesus is Basilus Basileon Basilus Basileon topic. King of Kings, Revelation chapter 17 verse 14, 1916 a previous Near Eastern phrase for rulers, or Basilus ton Basileonton Basilus ton Basileonton Lit. King of those being kings, 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 15. Other titles involving Basilus include Basilus ton Oranon, translated as King of Heaven, with his Basileia ton Oranon, i.e. Kingship or Kingdom of Heaven, and as Basilus ton Eudaion, i.e. King of the Jews see Inri. In Byzantine art, a standard depiction of Jesus is Basilus Tes Doxus King of Glory in the West the Christ or Image of Pity, a phrase derived from the Psalms 24-10 and the Lord of Glory Kyrios Tes Doxus, 1 Corinthians 2 verse 8. <laughs> Modern Greece During the post-Byzantine period, the term basilis, under the renewed influence of classical writers on the language, reverted to its earlier meaning of king. This transformation had already begun in informal usage in the works of some classicizing Byzantine authors. In the Convention of London in 1832, the great powers the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland, July Monarchy France, and Imperial Russia agreed that the new Greek state should become a monarchy, and chose the Wittelsbach Prince Otto of Bavaria as its first king. The great powers furthermore ordained that his title was to be, Basilis Tes Helados meaning, King of Greece, instead of, Basilis Ton Helenon i.e. King of the Greeks. This title had two implications, first, that Otto was the king only of the small kingdom of Greece, and not of all Greeks, whose majority still remained under the rule of the Ottoman Empire. Second, that the kingship did not depend on the will of the Greek people, a fact further underlined by Otto's addition of the formula, eleoitheo i.e. by the grace mercy of God. For ten years, until the 3rd of September 1843 revolution, Otto ruled as an absolute monarch, and his autocratic rule, which continued even after being forced to grant a constitution, made him very unpopular. After being ousted in 1862, the new Danish dynasty of the House of Schleswig Holstein Sonderburg Glucksburg took over with King George I in a demonstrative move, as to assert both national independence from the will of the powers, and as to emphasize the constitutional responsibilities of the monarch towards the people. His title was modified to King of the Hellenes, which remained the official royal title until the abolition of the Greek monarchy in 1974. The two Greek kings who bore the name of Constantine, a name of great sentimental and symbolic significance, especially in the irredentist context of the Megali idea, were often, although never officially, numbered in direct succession to the last Byzantine emperor, Constantine XI, as Constantine XII and Constantine XIII respectively. 
Topic see also Anthesteria, Dionysus festival in which a Basilina, wife of the Archon Basilis for the time, went through a ceremony of marriage to the wine god. May be compared to carnivals and other charivaris. Octoridas Imperium Sovereignty Topic Notes Topic References Topic Sources Robert Drews. Basilis. The Evidence for Kingship in Geometric Greece, Yale 1983. Michael Janda. Anering and Basilis, in Analecta Homini Universali Decata. Festschrift für Oswald Panigal Zoom 65. Gebertstag, Volume 1. Edited by Thomas Krisch, Thomas Lindner, and Ulrich Müller. Stuttgart, Hans Dieter Heinz, 2004, pp. 84-94. Joachim Schindler. On the Greek type Hippias, in Studies Palmer, ed. Meid, 1976, 349-352. Topic external links https colon slash slash web dot archive dot org slash web slash two oh oh four oh nine one oh oh eight four seven three oh slash http colon slash slash project six dot dartmouth dot edu slash history slash bronze underscore age slash lessons slash less slash twenty five HTML